Welcome back to our series of videos on domes. In this particular video we're going to work on constructing a dome geometry that is a combination of a lamella pattern and a pi sector pattern for a small circle dome. In a previous discussion we talked about uh, what a lamella dome is. In this case we have a certain number of spacings at the baseline. We have an identical number above. So for every base spacing there, we have the same number of spacings here, and we have a spacing there, and a spacing there, and so forth. So as our small circles, which are represented by these blue members, get smaller and smaller towards the top, the density of our green members becomes greater and greater. So this pattern of maintaining a constant number of subdivisions as we go up, so here we have one and one and one and one and so forth. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence, so we know the number of straight segments at each of these small circles is identical. That pattern we're calling a lamella pattern, and um, the definition of lamella is complicated and has numerous historical interpretations. So for the moment, I'm not going to bother defining it in detail, but I'm going to let it go to say that this pattern of stacking this triangle on top of that one, 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 getting narrower and narrower as we go up on the dome, we're referring to as the lamella pattern. Now, one of the comments we made is that all this bulk of material up near the top is not very structurally efficient, and we would like to find a way of distributing our material on the dome more efficiently. So, one concept we can look at starts with this notion of a hat box. And on the hat box, we have a cylindrical wall around the boundary. And that wall is very logically broken down using a lamella pattern. The lamella pattern makes perfect sense here. Um, this spacing is identical to that spacing, which is identical to that. And this member is identical to that and identical to that. And these actually are all sort of on a great circle of the cylinder, if we can call it that. Uh, so the lamella pattern works well on vertical surfaces. When we get to horizontal surfaces, the small circles get progressively much smaller very rapidly. So instead of a small circle here and a small circle there, both of which are identical in essence, uh, one is just rotated slightly relative to the other. Once we get up here, we have a small circle that's very long here. The next one is much shorter. The next one much shorter. The next one much shorter. And at that point, the logic is that we go to something called a pi sector subdivision of the surface. So here is a pi shaped wedge, and here is another pi shaped wedge. And as we get closer and closer to the center, it makes sense to have fewer and fewer members. So right here in the pi sector, we have one, two, three, four members. The next row in, we have one, two, three members. Then we have one and two. And then finally, at the one at the center, we only have one member crossing the pi sector. So conceptually, I want you to imagine the following logic. On a dome, we have a continuously evolving surface, which might start off vertical for a hemispherical dome. Uh, it starts off vertical down at the boundary and gradually keels over and the angle changes and it goes from being predominantly vertical to being more horizontal than vertical. So in the portions that are more nearly vertical we're going to apply a lamella pattern. In the portions that are more horizontal we're going to do a pi sector pattern. And now you can imagine this dome warping where we sort of take this flat surface and we bulge it upward and then we also come along and we mash inward right along this edge so that we take this shape and we evolve it into a continuous curve typical of a dome 
and basically halfway angular wise halfway up the dome we convert from a lamella pattern which is for the more nearly vertical part to the pie sector pattern which is for the more nearly horizontal and that's what that looks like now we don't have I don't have morphing software so I'm going to show you how to generate this particular geometry um, and there I I don't doubt that morphing software to do this might exist out there because we are developing more and more powerful tools for morphing. Um, but I'm going to show you um, the way I understand how to do this at this point in time. And by the way, uh, how we do things is continuously evolving. When I first started working in domes, um, we had uh, huge trig tables hard copy printed trig tables, because we didn't have any computers at that time. Um, eight place trig tables, and we had something called Marchand calculators, which were mechanical calculators that could add, subtract, uh, multiply, and divide uh, up to 10 significant figures. They were very noisy machines, and we ran those machines for prolonged periods of time. And we would get our basic uh, geometric data we would work out our formulas, we get our trig data out of the trig tables, and we go through this painful process of carrying out these computations. Nowadays, of course, we have transitioned from those Marshall calculators to hand-held electronic calculators, and, and subsequently to computers using software such as, <coughs> as Excel. We also have various uh, auto, various CAD programs, uh, 3D CAD programs, 3D structural analysis programs, and now we have programs like Rhino and um, Grasshopper, which can be used to do a vast assortment of very complex shapes. Um, what I'm gonna use is multi-frame, and the reason I tend towards that is not only is it a pretty powerful and effective geometry generator where I understand what the geometry is that's being generated, but it also allows us to do structural analysis after the fact. So we can take a dome like this and we can put loads on it and we can study the distribution of forces in the system. So this is an example of a real world um, small circle dome which has a lamella pattern up to this level right here. So for example, we have that triangle on top of that triangle. And then um, we convert to a pie sector where, where you see a continuous ridge line, uh, not a ridge line, but a continuous great circle member, which is basically the definer of the pie sector. So that right there and that, these are the great circle members on this dome and they are the only ones uh, all the rest of them are either sort of in some random pattern or they're in small circles so here we have for example a small circle and this is a small circle but these are on a great circle they are in vertical planes and the vertical planes pass through the origin or the center of this geometry so this is an example of what this would look like on an actual structure. And by the way, the small circle is great, very appealing because as I mentioned, um, we can basically um, manufacture this entire dome to the same specifications. We can leave off this bottom part and the remainder of the dome from this level up is perfectly sensible and balanced structurally. Likewise, we can leave off the first two uh, bands of structural members and the remainder of the dome makes sense structurally. So we can have a, a whole series of domes out of one kit of parts. Now we're going to talk about a way of generating this. And again, we're going to work in multi-frame. So I'm going to take multi-frame down here and get it set up in my window appropriately and now I'm going to take a member and I'm going to draw it out and I'm going to turn off rendering 
I'm going to set this point to uh, the origin, which is 0, 0, 0. And I'm actually, I probably don't even want to do this. Let me just delete that. I went off on a tangent there. Now I'm going to go pick my arc. I'm going to do it about the origin, x and y equals 0. I'm going to pick a radius of 10 to be consistent with what we've been doing all along. I'm going to do a start angle of 0, an end angle of 90, and pick six segments. So now this is, will be the zenith of my dome. Uh, that's the at the base of the dome. And I'm going to click all this. I'll lasso all, the, lasso all of that. And I'm going to say duplicate. And before I do that, let me go back here and make the following point. Uh, up near the top here, the closest thing to equilateral triangles are, is going to be a have, to have a hexagon up here. Now, we can do a pentagon, we can even do a square up there if we want to. Um, but for the moment, we're going to do a hexagon because that produces the closest thing to equilateral uh, triangles, which means the members are all about the same length. Now, we know this member is a little longer than that member by because if we just laid out the triangles in the form of a hexagon that would be truly equilateral but this point is clearly raised up a little bit out of the plane and that makes these members a tiny bit longer than those now you may think that's not too important but if you don't get that length right you won't have the right amount of crown to this hexagonal pyramid and you'll appear to have a flat spot on the top of your dome or a spot that sticks up too high. So you got to get those dimensions pretty precise. And by the way, those of us who've done domes over the years have figured out that if you don't have four place accuracy, you're in trouble. So one of the things that made domes really difficult early on is that we were using mainly slide rules. Slide rules are only three place accuracy. We could never do a smooth, proper dome uh, working off numbers that we generated from a slide rule. So that's where the Marchand mechanical calculators became crucial to giving us adequate accuracy. So we're going to come back and we're trying to generate this thing and we have six bands coming down and the three top bands are going to be pi sector and the three bands below that are going to be lamella and so I'm going to go back to my multi-frame file and we said we have six part symmetry at the top so in other words to create one pi sector I need to duplicate this 60 degrees over around the vertical axis which is the y-axis so I'm going to come duplicate and I'm going to pick cylindrical and for the theta about y, I'm going to pick 60 degrees, and I'm going to do it one time. And now I'm going to swing this around, and I'm going to hit control total so that I can see the whole thing in my window. Now, um, the central portion, we said we just have one member that goes across there. For the next band down, we're going to have two members. So we're going to pick this one and we're going to say duplicate. And we're going to duplicate it over 30 degrees. Now, this is not an actual member in the structure. I simply did this to begin to establish the points uh, that lie on a circle at the second small circle. So I put that member there just to establish what that point is. So now I'm going to come along and I'm going to snap to there then to there, and then to there. And now I can actually eliminate that member because it was just a construction member. And I'm going to put in some members that complete the geometry for that portion of the pi sector. Now I need to duplicate this around by 20 degrees, which is a third of 60 because I now want to subdivide that and I should have done it twice. So I'm going to duplicate that again. And now I have constructed two points down here that are construction points. And I'm going to snap my small circle members 
to those points. And again, I'm going to erase these and construct my geometry, which looks like this. Okay, so that's the end of my pie sector part of this uh, structure. The remaining part is a little tricky. I'm going to pick these two points. And I'm going to rotate those points over because now I want to do the zigzag pattern of the lamella structure. And each of those uh, portions is going to be a 20 degree portion. Um, but half of 20 degrees is 10 degrees. So I'm going to rotate those. Let's see if I can do that about the Y axis and half of 20 degrees should be 10 degrees if I've done this right. And I'm not sure I did. Yes, I did that right. So I'm going to do that. And while I'm about it, I should have done these. So I'm going to say rotate 10 degrees. And now I have this structure. And now I'm going to say this thing right here and that thing right there I can duplicate. And there are a bunch of different ways to do this. And some of you may figure out even more efficient and logical ways. But I'm going to duplicate that 20 degrees and I'm going to do that twice. And I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to, this is sort of like checkers. You figure out how many of these members you can put in before you have to quit. So it's kind of like jumping your opponent's members. You try to jump as many as you can. Um, so I'm going to come along here and do this, that, and that. So now I got all my bottom members in, and now I'm going to come and do this. Whoops. So that one's correct. These are not. I botched that. But now I have a chance to show what a Checkers champion I am, maybe. And now I'm kind of at my wits end to get that last one. I do that. So now I have a a pie sector along the whole thing, except it's a wiggly pie sector because the lamella part just refuses to line up with anything. Um, and now I want to replicate this. And my dilemma is if I replicate this whole thing at 60 degrees five times, these members along this edge are going to lie on top of those members. So I want to go actually get rid of some of these original members. They were crucial to setting up the geometry, but now they're kind of getting in my way. And the reason is I cannot replicate them on top of the original members because if I go around, for example, in this direction, these members would have landed on top of these and the computer program would have told me that it regrets that it can't do that because it doesn't make sense to the structural analysis part that two objects would share the same location in space. So now I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to say 60 degrees. I'm going to do it five times and this is where I tend to make a lot of mistakes because I still forget members going on top of members but today I was successful and now I have this geometry, which is basically pi sector on the top and lamella down below. So 
that's how you construct a combination lamella and pisector small circle dome. I will tell you that if you look, man, there's something wrong with that. What did I do wrong here? No, I'm just looking at the wrong thing. So here's the pie sector. And that looks sensible. Those are the in interior members in this pie sector. So when you go look at this, you'll discover that I have subdivided these members equally. Some people design it so that that member is equal to that member is equal to that member. So you might get slightly different data if you use someone else's uh, generative program, but pretty much um, this shows you a good way that you can do this in a simple way using this structural analysis software multi-frame. So that ends our uh, lecture on constructing um, network dome geometry of a small circle nature using a combination of lamella and pi circle geometries.